Posey Glove series. And today we're gonna be starting the sound design with Massive series. So this is a complement series to the Massive from the ground up. So I'm assuming you, you know what all the buttons and knobs do. Now you wanna make some sounds with it. You wanna have fun making sounds with Massive. The first one is always the sub bass one. And I'm gonna add to these as I go on. So you might not see, you'll see a couple of these probably pop up every now and then just for the synth, just whenever I feel like making cool sounds and Massive. So, but, but the first one's always the sub bass because the sub bass, if you can't make a sub bass, something is wrong. Something's terribly wrong. You either have a terrible VST or that VST was made with a very specific thing in mind. You should always be able to make a sub bass. The simplest sub bass, we're gonna talk about variations on ideas because the, the sub bass can be used to form what most people probably would term a regular bass, but not realize it. So let's go ahead and look at the simplest one, which is the sine wave. So you can get a sine wave a variety of ways. The simplest way is we go over here and we just select something with a sine wave in it. So there's two. You have your sine square and sine triangle. And if we set it over to the wavetable position over to the sine side, we have a sine wave. And we can, again, do that for the triangle wave. So we're on the sine side, and the other side's a triangle. We don't want a triangle, we want a sine wave. There you have it. Now, we hear that our bass is clicking. Remember that in Massive, our default master envelope is four. So we're gonna go to four and simply adjust the attack out. And there you go, we got rid of the clicking, solved, easy peasy. So I actually, I really like these. Let's say that you want to get a sine wave some other way. This isn't doing it for you. Is there another way? The answer is, oh yeah, totally. Select some wave and then set your position. So we see that we here that we have a saw wave. All right, fine. What you can do is we can use the spectrum intensity so you go to intensity knob and we're going to bend our waveform. We're going to manipulate the harmonics within this wave table. Spectrum will simply roll frequencies off the top till we're left with a sine wave. And that's all we're going to have. So it's also got a, a cool sound, but you see we're left with a sine wave. So that's really great. If you can't hear those, you need better speakers because you should be able to hear these tones quite easily. It just means your speakers can't reproduce tones that are that low. Okay, cool. So we've got our sub bass sine wave thing figured out. But a lot of times people want a few higher harmonics because if your speakers can't reproduce that tone, your mix is going to sound very lacking in bass. And you can use a trick where you add harmonics to your bass and then when you play it over the phone, it will give the impression that bass was supposed to be there instead of bass just simply not being there at all. Your ears will hear and will sort of try and fill in the gap. So they'll listen to the, oh, I know I'm listening over a phone, but I clearly hear something that should be going lower in the frequency spectrum. And so they'll give you a little more leeway. It's something some people like to do. I typically stick with my EDM style tracks with a just a solid sine tone. And that's just because I've got so much going on sometimes it doesn't make any sense to put anything else in there. But if you're doing hip hop tracks or something where you have more room in the low end, then depending on what you're doing, of course they vary widely, then you may consider doing one of these techniques. So let's hop into one of those. So to add some harmonics, the simplest way is you can take any timbre, as long as it's got frequencies that ex exist down in the sub range. And all you need to do is filter the top off. So we see here, uh, let's take our intensity off. We see that we have all these harmonics up there. We're like, oh my gosh, look at all these harmonics. So what we want to do is we want to lop it so that we are only left with this amount. To do that, we're simply going to route our filter. So I'm putting it into filter one and I'll even route it only to filter one. And then I'm going to go to low pass two, low pass four, whatever. You pick a filter and we set our cutoff point. And now we have our, our sound. So that's really, that's another really simple way. It's another very common thing that is done. People need a, need something in the low end. You can't have that nothing there. So that's one sound that people like to use. Another thing they like to do is they'll say, I want to bring out this bass though. I want it to get sort of more aggressive. Like, you know, those kinds of these biting basses. And that's just code for, I want to bring up a particular kind of saturation to my signal. I want to add components to my signal that weren't there before and then control them. So it's like, wow, wow, but not the filter kind because that's like, that has certain connotations. Maybe you don't want that because you could do this, but, and then we could get rid of the resonance. And, 
And that some people do that, but that's not really got that same vibe. It's it's, it's a little it's way too bright in it and it chunks up into the top part of our spectrum, something we definitely don't want. So what we're going to do is we're going to come over here to our effects one and we are going to just grab some distortion. Now you could grab I'm grabbing the the tele tube, tele tube, however you say that. Classic tube and the in the broader tube, you grab any of those. You could consider coming down here and messing with the hard clipper or the parabolic shaper or the sign shaper. I just like the tube. It's got a saturation, distortion, a drive that I really like. So if I play it, and there you have it, like we're solid. And that's sort of a lot of times, I like you've heard this, if you listen to hip hop, you've probably heard this like so many times, hip hop or rap or whatever it is you like. And then we could, we could try out the different tubes. We could say, oh, what would uh, the, the Bronner tube bring to the table? Like, oh, that'd be kind of interesting. Maybe maybe bring down the drive and instead change the dry-wet relationship. Now, I'd probably mess with the drive if I was going to be messing with this. So you, you see, they, they each have their own particular sound, and that can really offer different characters when you're designing a just a low filler tone to fill up the bottom end of your track, which is typically the role of the sub bass. If it's a main focal point, which in some styles it actually can be, um, maybe it's forming some sort of a funky beat with something. Those are the, those are typically really sort of just laid back, chill tracks, but occasionally it is a focal point rarely. So it just depends on what you're trying to accomplish. Again, we could come in here and mess with these. I wouldn't recommend these particular methods because they are quite aggressive. I mean, we could try it out if we turn off our tube, cause that'd be a little much cause we want to keep our stuff down in the low end. Just to make sure you insert two, put it behind filter one. And let's grab, you know, like, let's try the parabolic shaper. So see, I just don't like the higher when you drive it really hard. Maybe I'll tone it back. A lot of people like to tone it back. If they want, if you want to get sort of more artful about your, your base, maybe you wanted to have an element to itself. Now we're moving into base territory rather than sub base territory. But let's say you want to have some sort of a shape to it. We could grab an envelope and we could automate the we could have it turn off over time and we give we could give this like a, a short pluck sound and change that uh, I should be going the other way a little less so you see we're adding just tight these are tiny changes but they can make a large difference to the feeling of a sound, which a lot of times can be quite difficult to get right. One thing I don't like about the envelopes is the representation of time. Like, like this, just the, I like the fact that it's graphic, but I don't like the fact that sometimes really large changes can look small and small changes can look really large. Like they don't have any sort of scaling that they're showing you. There's no scaling at all. It's just kind of, it's all ear. It's all using your ear. So that's really good. But it's not like proportional to me. So it's a little confusing. But you get the idea. We could begin to shape our sound. Let's say that we, let's go back to the tube, which I, I happen to like this tone a bit more. And then so on and so forth. We could come in here now. We're using our. Remember that the beginning of our sound was based on the sort of lopping off of a of a thing. So we could choose another thing, another another tone. And if we turn off our filter, let's say we wanted to start with something a little crazier. Okay. Let's see what we got here. Let's say we want to start with that. That's already got. It's already almost pretty close to the timbre we're looking for. We just want to shape it and make it a little more close to a, something that would be more useful. So we're going to low pass it. Maybe right about there on this one. Yeah, I'd, I'd be probably, you're, you're probably going to not want resonance on your sub bass. But it's always worth turning a knob, seeing what happens. And then let's add in our distortion. This one down a little bit and then we could add in our little movement here so that's a popular thing people have they go up and down all that stuff if you want to make it sort of like a pluckier sub bass maybe something that fades out over time 
more similar to a drum. We could just come over here to our amplitude and turn it off over time. So we're gonna take that down. And now that's something, so this brings up an important point too, that we notice that our tube is not linear. So as our signal gets soft here, it affects, the distortion is affected over time. So we could even mute this, this automation here. And we can hear the distortion character change as our sound moves through it. And Grant, this is in a very like extreme example. But you can hear like the ah at the beginning of the tone of the tone, and then it disappears. That's a result of the way this is interacting. It's it's level dependent. So as this gets softer, the distortion will become less aggressive. In this particular case, it's equivalent to like if we had like a wave shaper. Do 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 do. It's always a nightmare seeing if I can remember where things are in that list. But it's like this, right? If if our signal is really loud it's gonna be distorted like a lot more. And if it's soft, it's not gonna be quite as distorted. And it doesn't have anything like this on the end. If it had something like that on the end, we'd be able to tell because our high harmonics would just be like outrageously loud. So we can we can sort of guesstimate, this is a, a very aggressive curve though, but we could try and approximate a shape that would produce results similar to what this is based on our observations of how things are happening. They may have included fancier, stuff maybe they they split up the way it deals with different parts of the frequency spectrum but i highly doubt it i just i just don't think they did but maybe they did so you know it's, it's emulating a tube whatever that means for this particular case so yeah if you have any questions about this let me know i tried to give some some examples and some ideas that you may have not considered before. They're, they're kind of things that you hear applied in tracks. People do weird stuff. Another thing that I've heard is, should I compress it? And it's generally, if it's a if it's a timbre, then you may consider compressing it slightly, but you're just trying to control the dynamics of it. So don't go overboard. You probably don't need to. If anything, you just need to turn it down with a sub bass, especially if it's just a sine tone. The compression just changed the volume of the thing. If you're changing your volume over your sine tone over time, then I guess you consider it. Maybe you live tracked it in with a bad MIDI keyboard or something, or you're just not a good piano player and you hit keys really inconsistently, but you really shouldn't have to compress the sub bass. And then, uh, oh, chorusing. That was what I wanted to talk about too. You know, I, people all the time, should I do stereo or not stereo? And almost everyone's going to tell you, you do not want, and this is true for the spectrum. The sub bass itself, depending on the method you use, so if you're using a timbre, a stereo sub bass could sound cool. Like you've totally heard that sound before, especially if you listen to jungle, it's all over jungle. But um, let's, but what they're trying to say when they say make your sub bass mono is those low, low frequencies. So if you're dealing with just a sine tone, then of course you're gonna want that to be mono. You generally don't want a sine tone because you're gonna have just big amplitude differences that will cause phasing. It won't sound very good. With chorusing, it's a little bit different of a deal. Even with a sine tone, it, it still sounds, it has a certain element to it because it has to clone it and then and it's repitching it. So it's a little bit different. It's not quite a fair comparison, but generally you want it mono. And what they'll do is they'll take like, let's grab an EQ. They'll take all frequencies below like, I don't know, 40 hertz, 50 hertz, probably, I shoot, I'd probably go all the way up to 50, and just mono that out. They'll make a mono, it's the same in both speakers, because when you play it over a really big system that can really produce these enormous waves, they you're gonna run into way more acoustic issues than mixing issues. So it's easier if it produces the same signal, it's in phase, and then you just need to worry about where you put your speakers, because if they're in uh, funky positions, then you'll run into whole brand new issues. But uh, at least they're not related to what you did in your mix. If you have any questions, let me know. Subscribe and have a blessed day.